Okay, so this is day two, and we're going to do some stuff to, that you should do when you're doing a road trip. You should check all the time. So, first thing you need to do is uh, pop the hood. Ah, that's tight. Okay, so uh, let's check the oil. It's five, definitely five weight. Well, there is oil in there, that's good. Check the level. Is that the right where it should be on the stick? Oh. Check coolant. Right over here. Usually you can see a line in there. But you can't see through these tanks. Seems like you're supposed to be able to. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty full. No, no weird looking oil leaks. Okay. A rag back there so I can get it later. Check out the tires. I got to some tank suspension that we came down. That looks much lower than it should be. We also got a lot. We also got a lot of weight in the car. Well, I mean, pretty much. It's a big thing. The tires look fine. I don't think I need to start trying to find the pressure on them. So just simple stuff. We're gonna today. We're gonna go to the Musical Highway. Uh, we're gonna go to Cadillac Henge. Um, that should be kind of neat. And. Uh, I don't know what else I'd go on the way. Just be getting five hours of sleep and stuff is pretty good. Yesterday was 700 miles of driving. So you do that with your electric appliance um, in 10 hours. I, I, I know you can't. I'll just say that always. I'm going to do 500 miles today. Hell, we could have just kept on going if we weren't exhausted. <laughs> so, all right. The, the adventure continues. All right, so... We're going to go to the Musical Highway on Historic Route 66. Um, from my understanding, though, like most things in this country at this point, it's in disrepair. There's no more sign marking it, and it doesn't play all of America the Beautiful anymore. But we're going to go see what we got. And uh, it's just outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. In... Uh, Coracell or something like that. So this is, see this is now, route, this is Route 66, what's left of it, the pieces. Three miles to it. We're almost there. Okay. Where is it? I don't see it. I'm in the gutter. That's sad. It did, I didn't hear anything. Oh well. This is the state of this country. Can't even 
attractions that once were really fun and good things to do are gone. Typical. It's like buying garbage parts now. Quite upsetting. Oh well. We'll move on. So, we've been driving toward the uh, eastern part of New Mexico and Arizona. No, we're in New Mexico. I know it's confusing, but we've been for the last uh, hour and a half, we've had a southerly wind of about 40 miles an hour, moving the car all over the place. If I'm just quiet for a second, you can hear the wind. That's how hard it's blowing. It, 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 it's, it's, it's absolutely unreal. It's like being in a tropical storm, but there's no clouds. It's crazy. No wind and no clouds. Um, yeah. I don't know how some of these truckers are keeping these things straight because it is just absolutely dinking this car dance. Other than that, it's been uneventful, which is good. Knock on wood. And we're almost to Texas and we're going to be stopping at the uh, historic uh, midpoint of Route 66. So, yeah. But it is. It is ungodly windy. Wow. So, uh, still doing pretty good on the fuel. And everything else has been uh, pretty nice. And the window isn't getting so yucky as it did yesterday. I had to clean it twice. But that wind, amazing. All right. Up. Let's see in a few minutes. So we had to stop at a wonderful tourist thing in the middle of nowhere, Texas. The uh, midpoint for Route 66. Exactly 1,139 miles each way to Los Angeles and Chicago from wherever the heck this is. Uh, the neat thing is I uh, have this Ford. It's 57 Ford. That, and the pictures look really great. But you know, time. <sighs> and uh, yeah. So this is, uh, the midpoint. There's a restaurant here. Got a got a cobra over there. Thunderbird. An old antique. Yeah. In the uh, cafe. The Route 66 roadside attraction. Yeah. Okay. And a fabulous 40 motel. That looks special, spectacular. Great. Okay. All right, onward and upward. So we're making another tourist stop, and this wind is killing me. Um, we're here at the uh, Cadillac Ranch. Absolutely freaking cool. Ugh. Seems like everybody uh, does their own little gra graffiti. I don't have my own tag. <laughs> so we're gonna walk on up. Walk on in. Yeah, we could have parked a lot closer. Oh well. So let's go over there. Yeah. 
the uh, graffiti is absolutely priceless. Totally priceless. They actually do sell the spray paint figures. I don't have my uh, microphone condom. It's missing. So I bought a new one. Way to the Cadillacs in this freaking hurricane. And see, so they sell the spray paint, and then you can go. And put your own. Uh, touch on there. And it's like it's been a lot of spray paint put on these cars. Amazing. 50s, 50s Cadillacs, that's a late, that's a 60, 60, 60, 60. Wow. And then another 60. Every piece of them gets painted. It's pretty, pretty impressive. What do you want to do? The smell of of spray paint is. Me as high as a kite now. I mean, there's so much peanut stuff, it's actually like stalactites and stalagmites. Cadillac Ranch. The sand hitting my body is killing me. And uh, we doing we'll be uh, doing more of an update a little later. There it is. Juana. Let's see what it's. Juana. Yep. Dutch's restaurant in Buffett. So this is very typical of 
every town we've run through on 287. Speed limits drop down 65, 55, 40, and should go down to 35 pretty soon. And um, this is um, pretty much the way they all look. Out here in western Texas, with the wind that blows so hard, you know, you can't even stand up against it. Good stuff. Great stuff. I got a Jake break in, in town. The only thing I like about these towns at this point is the wind stops blowing and it doesn't hurt. Here's the 35. I was waiting for that. It's, it's nice when you have 40 mile per hour winds and dry ground because then you have dust storms or boobs. And, and, and yeah, this is the second one we've gone through. It is utterly just miserable. Wow, you can just hear that wind. And this has been all day now, literally all day. And the only time it stops is when you go through the towns. It is utterly brutal. Gusty winds area, no kidding. Wow. So day two is now complete. And, um, yeah. This was, uh, this has been um, interesting, to say the least. The car has been fabulous. It's uh, this drive. Uh, today we had nothing but 40 to 50 mile per hour winds coming from our south. And basically that was to uh, from the, on hitting the right side of the car and moving it all the time. And there were tractor trailers everywhere. But this little girl is... Uh, performing fabulously. Need to clean the windshield because I had a truck kick up a nice big piece of rubber right there and uh, yeah, need to get that off. And this top definitely needs to get changed. It was as loud as riding in a new Bronco. I mean, it was just, it's just, there's just so much wind noise in this car, it's, it's painful. But uh, otherwise it did well. Still getting above 25 miles a gallon with it, doing between 70 and 80. Um, ride itself has been smooth as silk. I mean, outside of the wind noise, you can't hear any road noise on it. These uh, these tires that I bought, the Yokohamas, the tread, nice, good tread. Feels very positive on the road. Uh, you know, put 1,200 miles on it so far, and it's running really, really great. So. Uh, yeah, we have uh, two more, three more, today's Friday. I guess three more days of driving. And tomorrow we're going to the uh, Dr. Pepe Museum and uh, the Mammoth Cave and uh, and a Bucky's. We're gonna go to Bucky's, so that'll be fun. So we'll have all, you know, I'm probably gonna release these in a row, so, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, it's been uh, very interesting though to see how a 29 year old car can run so well with so much mileage on it. And uh, cause you know, in 1989, if you tried to take a 1970 car out, I, I don't know if they would actually have made it. It may have, possibly, but uh, it's been over a hundred degrees every day. So I'm impressed. I'm really, really impressed. Yeah, but these are these are new classics because this is mid 90s car. I mean, they're old now and you got to remember that this is next year is gonna be a 30 year old car. So yeah, love to hear your comments. You know, if you're finding any of this fun, subscribe and uh, you know, 
like, share, do all those things. And uh, most of all, though, if you have a cool old car of any sort, take it out because you're going to make someone's day, including your own. I'll catch you down the road.